Kia ora koto. Welcome to um, hopefully one of the last Zooms we might have on COVID management. Um, and this one is really looking at a little bit around um, case management and then um, how we might move into long-term management. Um, quick note on your EOTC um, database, coordinated database. Um, if you can just have a check that uh, those emails are coming through either to you or to someone in your school. If you're not sure, uh, just email um, admin at eons.org.nz and we can check that you've got someone who's actually still in your school listed on that database. And again, um, share with your neighbouring schools um, to check that they are also on that database. Uh, this is a whakatauki that I like to start um, these meetings with. Um, it's certainly been a, um, some turbulent waters for the waka over the last few years, um, but hopefully things are starting to really settle down now as we get back to uh, operations as per normal and embedding things into our systems that will stand us in good stead now and into the future. Uh, the overarching messages, uh, you've already got a really good uh, way of managing health and safety. You've had a lot of practice around COVID over the last two years. Um, so now, again, really looking at how you embed those practices into normal planning, um, that the things you're doing are reasonably practical. And of course, that falls out of health and safety legislation and continuing to follow the public health measures. We've done some really good work with external providers around the COVID space. And so it's really good to continue that and also expand it um, to make sure you're covering all sorts of things in your discussions with those external providers and covering off all of the kind of health and safety requirements um, with your providers. And agreeing on supervision and responsibilities and roles that the school and the provider plays in delivering your events. Uh, so health measures again and into the future, I think um, COVID's given us a good lesson um, around, you know, if you're not well, it's okay and it's really actually important to stay at home, uh, whether it's COVID, the flu, uh, just a really nasty um, cold, all of those things that you can end up spreading around um, and uh, affecting other people's enjoyment of their activities um, you know, and the same with good hygiene practices um, we've had a good lesson in what those are um, let's just keep those going not only to um, reduce the likelihood of COVID um, in our community and in our school but also um, for all of those other really good reasons um, we'll talk a little bit in a minute about um, household contacts um, and what uh, managing those looks like at the moment um, but around considering where the masks are appropriate and practical for household contacts. Uh, so the main um, issue we'll talk about today is around case management. Um, and really when you're working with an EOTC provider or whether you, where you're running your own trip um, away from school. Um, so obviously there's still a requirement if a student tests positive that they must isolate. And uh, if they are on your trip, um, when they test positive, then there's um, really two options uh, for that isolation. One is um, you get them home, um, and that uh, will either involve um, someone uh, from the camp uh, taking them home, or um, a parent coming to pick them up. Um, can't use public transport, uh, not sensible to put them uh, a student that's tested positive on a bus with a whole lot of other kids. Um, obviously, if you're going to be the one taking, or one of your staff is going to be the one taking them home, then you're putting all of those precautions in place, um, like mask wearing. So pays to have those the masks um, handy, you know, all of those um, hand sanitizers, etc., all there ready to go if you need them. The 
household contacts and the treatment of household contacts has changed in the last um, update of regulations. So now you'll be aware that household contacts are no longer required to isolate. So what this means in a um, school camping or um, a longer trip um, is that um, a, if someone's a household contact before the trip, um, they can go on um, your events. Uh, they do need to be testing um, daily uh, if they're a household contact with a rat test um, for five days from whenever that person that is positive in their household tested positive. Uh, so make sure that you have um, that in place for them. And the Ministry of Health uh, saying that those household contacts should be wearing a mask when they leave home. Um, so look at how um, that is practical uh, in um, whatever setting your EOTC trip is in. One of the keys here is just being really um, careful and cognizant to make sure um, your parents are aware of whatever your expectations are particularly around um, if you expect parents to come and get uh, students that might test positive or have symptoms. Uh, you know, that's a very reasonable expectation if you're um, not too far away, but make sure that parents are aware um, that that it would be the case. And also around um, what testing might be involved um, for students while they're away. Um, for example, if they're coming on your trip as household contacts or they um, become symptomatic and test positive while they're away, um, and they, or that you would be um, giving them a test um, if they're symptomatic or that you'd just be ringing the parents and asking them to come and get a symptomatic student without them having a test. Um, so just being really clear on what your expectations are there. So there's no surprises for parents. Um, as I said right at the start, um, there's been some really good um, work done by schools with providers, and it's really important that that continues and is. Uh, it's around the whole big picture around managing safety on your events, uh, really being clear with providers on uh, the supervision structure that each event has, uh, who's in charge when, uh, free time is a classic example in some of these activities, you know, when the um, activity stops for lunch, uh, is it the provider that's still supervising or does that come back to the teacher who's in charge at that stage? So roles and responsibilities uh, and who's doing what, really important to have um, discussed, agreed and recorded, um, whether that's in an email chain, um, using Form 6, the external provider agreement form from the EO, uh, EON's, um, EOTC toolkit uh, can help guide those discussions. Um, and uh, just keeping in mind the three C's, which are a requirement out of the Health and Safety at Work Act, okay, that you do those um, both before, during, and ideally after as you review your event. Okay, that constant monitoring, coordinating, and discussing. Uh, and lastly, um, we're going to be super quick today. Uh, just a few bits and pieces of where you find things on the EON's website. Uh, this button down here will take you to the EOTC coordinator database. Uh, so you can either register as an EOTC coordinator or flick through an uh, email. Um, you can subscribe for, to our open source newsletter um, off this page. And you can still find EOTC through COVID-19 up the top. And that's where the most recent guidance sits. And this has been updated, uh, there's different dates in here now from this screenshot um, and where the recording of this little Zoom will sit. Uh, 
sooner or later um, we'll move this off our um, main tab but and it'll go down into EOTC management so if you pop in here a wee bit later on and you can't find it up on the main tab it'll be under EOTC management for you um, because there is quite a lot of other really um, good resources in there that uh, while some are Whilst they're things you can use um, online, they're also really good resources for um, at any stage, you know, particularly things like Maths in the Outdoors. That's not just a COVID resource. Um, it's got some fantastic activities in there for any time. Um, and the same applies to a number of those other um, resources in there. Uh, I mentioned the um, provider tool. Uh, the external provider form. Um, it's downloadable over here um, in the EOTC SEMP, Safety Management Plan Template and Toolkit forms. Um, so you can pop in there and download that. Um, other good things to check out in here are the good practice guides. Um, they give you industry practice on running in up to, I think, about 14 different activities now. And a general guidance document on um, transport on driving students which um, is reasonably new and really good to have a look at uh, yeah lots of other things um, the EOTC uh, management zoom series uh, has got zooms on all sorts of different topics in EOTC management so worth having a look and it's just time for questions now um, I'll stop re recording in a second um, but before I do um, there's EOTC support email address here as well that you can just pop questions through um, at any stage okay so um, nice to see people online and um, hopefully there's not too many more of these COVID Zooms and we all get back to kind of embedding it in our practice going forward um, one question I had around, um, you know, how do we embed it into our practice going forward? Uh, you know, you would look at it um, under illness in your risk assessment form, uh, same way as you might do for you know, standard vomiting and diarrhea bugs about how you might um, deal with those on a camp. Um, at the moment, uh, having a little process or procedure uh, written up just for COVID that uh, lays out exactly how you're going to uh, manage cases and household contacts is a good idea uh, but going uh, and you can have that attached to your emergency response plan and then going forward um, that might become a more general um, this is how we respond to um, infectious illnesses um, where we need to have some pretty quick response to stop it um, going through the camp the, um, and you know that whole ability to be able to isolate um, clean etc that you know things like norovirus um, have always demanded but we're probably a little bit better at now okay, so if there's no other questions um, I'll say ka kite and thanks and uh, please feel free to get in touch <laughs>